of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear Confirmands, this is one of the most important days of your life. You're going to stand before God's holy altar. You're going to pledge your faith, your devotion, your very life to Him. And because it is such an important day, I always struggle with the sermon on a day like this. Because I think it needs to be something memorable. Remember back two years to your first communion service? What was the sermon about that day? Okay. Cannibalism. Cannibalism, that's right. Now that, that is memorable. That is memorable. It, we talked about eating the body of Christ, eat, drinking the blood of Christ, and how some folks might think that that was cannibalism. Alas, I don't think I'm going to be able to top that one. <laughs> So today's sermon may not be quite as memorable, but I think it is on an important topic, and a topic that is it's kind of a, it's been a hot topic for a number of years, and it's something our faith has a lot to say about. And the topic is self-esteem. Self-esteem. Being able to look at yourself and to say, I have value. I have worth. I am not junk. Now some people feel that the lack of self-esteem is the root of all evil. That may be a little overdone. For instance, you often hear that bullies and criminals suffer from low self-esteem. That if you look inside a bully or a criminal, you'll find a broken, hurting little child who doesn't feel very good about himself or herself and therefore lashes out at others to make them feel bad about themselves. However, there's a lot of research that says that bullies and criminals actually have very high self-esteem. They think the world resolves around them. It revolves around them. They think the, the world owes them something. So, so low self-esteem is not always a problem. Sometimes high self-esteem is a problem. Don't worry, though. Don't worry. We have taken care of the problem of high self-esteem. That's why we make you say things like, I, a poor, miserable sinner, or me, a poor, sinful being. We're, we're not going to let you get high self-esteem. But we don't want it to be low, either. We don't want it to be low. When you don't feel good about yourself, when you don't have a sense of self-worth, it can really, really get you down. And so today, as you prepare to enter your adult life in Christ, I wanted to talk about two things in our faith that give us a legitimate sense of self-esteem. And the first is simply this, that Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood so that you can belong to God forever. There's a passage in 1 Peter that says you have been ransomed, not with silver or gold or any perishable thing, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or spot. So that tells you what you are worth to God. You are worth the blood of Jesus Christ shed upon the cross, and that makes you valuable indeed. Now I want you to imagine that a couple of years from now, you're cleaning out the attic at your great-great-grandpa's house, and you're going through some boxes, and you find some old baseball cards. And one of those baseball cards is of Hannes Wagner, shortstop with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And you look at the Hannes Wagner card, and you say, huh, never heard of him. And you throw that card, you throw that card away. And you know what you just did? You just threw away a bunch of money. No. Now, for a long time, the, the value of the Hannes Wagner baseball card was stated as $106,000. But just a few years ago, the card sold on eBay. And you know what it sold for? It did not sell for $106,000. It sold for $1.2 million. And then after that, the owner sold it to another collector, and he got $2.8 million for it. So keep your eyes open when you're going through old baseball cards. <laughs> but really, what makes that card worth $2.8 million? After all, it's just a piece of stiff paper. What gives it such incredible value? Simply this, people are willing to pay that price for it. If nobody wanted to pay that price, then the card would not have that kind of value. But because people are willing to pay that much for it, that gives it an exalted worth. There is an album coming out 
by a band called the Wu-Tang Clan. It's got vocals, uh, vocals by Cher in it. And the funny thing is, there's only going to be one copy of this album. Only one copy of the album. And they're going to sell that one copy of the album to the highest bidder. I understand they've already had bids going up to $5 million. Now it's just an album. What's going to make it worth millions and millions and millions of dollars? Simply this, people are willing to pay that much. Now think about you. Jesus was willing to pay his blood for you. Not a mere $2.8 million or $5 million, but his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. You see what that says about your value? You were bought with a price, St. Paul says. You have incredible value. And if you ever have questions about your self-esteem, questions about your self-worth, you just look at the cross. And then you will see what you are really worth. What you are really worth. To God. And because you have such value to God, you want to treat your life in a way that shows that value. You don't want to do anything destructive, anything that cheapens that value. Obviously, as you journey through life, you're going to face temptations. And one of the best ways to deal with a temptation is to think, I am worth more than that. God purchased me in Christ, and I am worth more than that. Or as St. Paul says, you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. After all, would you pay $2.8 million for that baseball card and then take it home and use it as a coaster for your soft drinks? I don't think so. Or would you, would you pay like $10 million for that Wu-Tang Clan album and then take it out to the park and use it as a Frisbee? Here, I have a fetch! I don't think so. I don't think so. So you and I do not want to take our lives, our lives that were purchased at, at such a high price. We don't want to take our lives that Jesus bought with his own blood and use them for something cheap and sinful. No, we are worth more than that. There's another thing about self-esteem I wanted to talk about. And it has to do with a word, a beautiful word, a wonderful word, a meaningful word that has been completely stolen from your generation. You was robbed because they took a beautiful word away from you. Anybody know what word I'm talking about? We mentioned this in the class. Anybody know what word? A beautiful word that's been stolen from you. The word is ecstasy. The word is ecstasy. You know, I started noticing about five years ago that, that people in confirmation classes when I said ecstasy, what do you think they thought I was talking about? A drug! A drug! One of the most wonderful words in the English language, and now they've made it into a drug. You was robbed! You was robbed. But by golly, today we're going to rehabilitate that word. Because ecstasy is a key to self-esteem, and I ain't talking about a drug either. The real meaning of ecstasy is joy and bliss and rapture. But how do you get that joy and bliss and rapture? Let's take the word apart. It's, it's from Greek. Ek, meaning out of, and stasis, meaning self. So ecstasy means coming out of yourself. It means losing yourself, forgetting yourself. To be so rooted in something outside yourself that you forget all your troubles and your cares and your worries. You forget whatever gnaws away at your self-esteem. That is what ecstasy is, to be drawn out of yourself. And, and you really know what that's like, because I've looked at the things you're interested in, the things you're involved in. You're involved in music. You're involved in sports. And yes, a lot of you are involved in video games. And every one of those things, in one way or another, draws you out of yourself. That's what they all have in common. They all take you out of yourself. In music, you're taken out of yourself into the notes, into the sounds. In sports, you're, you're taken out of yourself as you try to do your best for the team. Even in video games, you're drawn out of yourself as you concentrate 
what's happening on the screen. And all of these things are a kind of ecstasy because you're forgetting yourself, your problems, and you're being drawn out of yourself. You know how blessed Martin Luther, our father in the faith, once defined salvation? He said this, God saves us by snatching us out of ourselves and rooting us in another, in Jesus Christ. In other words, for Luther, being saved is a kind of ecstasy. God is lifting you out of yourself, and he is attaching you to Jesus. And that is where real self-esteem comes from, in that idea of ecstasy. See, real self-esteem real self-esteem does not involve obsessively looking at yourself all the time. Real self-esteem comes from being drawn out of yourself focus on something outside of you. And for us, that something is Jesus. We keep our eyes on him. We keep our hearts on him. Just like you would a sport or some music or a video game, you keep your focus on Jesus. And not just for an hour or two, but throughout your life. Focus on Jesus. Let him draw you out of yourself. And there you have ecstasy. Not a drug better than any drug this kind of ecstasy is joy and peace. This is real ecstasy. That word they took away from you, but today you get it back. Today you get that word back. As you stand before God, as His Holy Spirit enables you to speak your faith in Jesus, the one who purchased you for God with His precious blood, as you speak those moments of, as you speak those words of faith, as you speak those words of faith, that will be a moment of ecstasy. You are focusing on something outside of yourself, on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord who loves you with an amazing love. Keep that focus, keep that focus going forward from this day. And I don't think you're going to have any problems with self-esteem. Glory to Jesus now and always. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ to life everlasting. Amen.